you guys. Hey to all of the Pimo JWs out there, the XJWs out there, and the Jehovah Witnesses, because I know you watching. This is Mackie Pimo JW Jones. Pimo, for those that don't know, means physically in, mentally out. That's the acronym. All right. So today, um, I wanted to talk about how I pretty much cured my PTSD. Now, not totally, not 100%, but a, a, a good majority of it. And a lot of it had to do with, of course, the organization, okay? I used to have so many nightmares of... Uh, the, 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 the sky cracking open and, and, and fire blasting from the sky and destroying people. Like the minute that I heard a thunderstorm coming. Now I know I'm not the only, uh, Jehovah Witness or XJW or PMOJW that have experienced this, but whenever there's a storm coming, lightning striking and everything, you automatically think man this could be the end you know and that's exactly how I felt and that's how it, it, that brings anxiety like every time a thunderstorm comes you think about this like that's not natural okay and then on the other side of it I used to always have uh, nightmares about demons chasing me and um, if I felt like I wasn't doing something right, Jehovah striking me down, I would wake up in a cold sweat, and I have had that problem for decades, I had that problem for decades, I even dealt with sleep paralysis a whole lot more than, than I do now. Well, it's probably because I don't sleep. <laughs> but now that I have awakened from the teachings of this organization, and now that I know, now that I now know that all of that stuff is a complete lie, it's actually a weight lifted off of my shoulders. Now, a lot of people who wake up, they, they, they feel devastated. Oh, I really believed it, and I'm so sad. I was actually relieved, okay? I'm relieved that, that God is not going to strike me dead, you know? And I can, I can live the way I want to, as long as I'm not hurting anybody. You see? long as I'm a, 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 a good person, a good citizen, do right by people, I have the freedom to believe what I want to believe or not believe what I don't want to believe. I have the freedom to do any kind of research I want to do without God looking over my shoulder like, uh-uh, you shouldn't do that. You're, you're, that means you're, tra you're a traitor. You're an apostate for doing this. Uh, apostate research now don't get me wrong when I first started doing research I was petrified I was petrified but when I find you know you know what they say they say what you want what uh, it, it is on the other side of fear and that is completely true you have to get out of that uh, fear that 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 comfort zone Otherwise, you'll never know what's on the other side of things. You know, I've always wanted to know what the fellowship people thought. I wanted to know what their thoughts were after they got this fellowship. Because <laughs> when I was a little kid, I used to think that this fellowship people, like, automatically go mute. You know, almost like you you ever you watch The Little Mermaid, right? <laughs> and uh the Queen Ursula, the sea witch or whatever of the sea. 
took away Ursula's voice. That's how it, it was assimilated to me as a child. I, it, it, it was similar to as if the Wicked Witch, aka the Kingdom Hall, took away these disfellowship people's voices. You know? And there had been people that I hadn't seen in so long that I don't even know what their voice sounds like anymore. Until recently, you know, I, I've started reconnecting with um, this fellowship of people all over the place now, you know. Uh, but, yeah. That's how, that's how I looked at it. Like, it was some damn Disney movie. Like, they just magically took their voice away, you know. Because you're told not to talk to the fellowship wives. But I am so glad going back to the PTSD. Now, I still have PTSD when it comes to other things that's, that is in no relation to the organization. Okay, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty much 99% cured myself of the nightmares that I used to have when I was a witness. I, 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 I felt, now this is, this is extremely weird, extremely sad, but I felt more afraid for my life as a Jehovah's Witness than I did, than I do now. Ain't that crazy? You know, you're supposed to be in the most secure organization in the world because, you know, the God that you serve, Jehovah God is supposed to be the most loving caring god you're supposed to feel secure in that if you don't feel any sense of security or stability when it comes to your religion when it comes to your relationships when it comes to any of that job any of that you're gonna always have that anxiety oh what if i lose my job oh what if this person is cheating on me oh what if god kills me right here right now because of something I did in 1986 you know some, 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 <laughs> some stupid shit like that you know so uh, I'm here to ask everyone the Jehovah Witnesses the PMOs like myself and the XJWs do you feel like you are more secure in your life now that you have awoken you know, you don't feel so so much anxiety. That religion gives you so much anxiety. And they want to tell you, oh, the anxieties of the world. And this is why we have so much anxiety. No! It was because of the organization putting so much stuff on us. Fear-mongering. Plus, all the studying we had to do for the week. Personal study. Family study. Field service three meetings a week it's damn near impossible you'll lose your fucking mind doing all this shit being a Jehovah's Witness 100% you'd have to not be married not have kids and not have a job in order to do that in order to do uh, in order to serve Jehovah perfectly I swear, because if you have any of the three things that I told you, family, kids, spouse, job, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It should not be that damn hard to serve God if you choose to do so. I'm not talking about the ones who are, you know, atheists or um, agnostic like myself. I'm strictly talking about those who still believe in in, in um, higher power or in God. Okay. I, I honestly believe if you are in tune with the universe, if you're in tune with yourself, with your family, and if you just do right by people, you are in tune with God. You are serving God. The most high, whoever that is. It could be you, if, if that's what you believe. You know? 
So, yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. I feel so much less anxiety spiritually. I actually feel more spiritual now than I did when I was a troubled witness. That wasn't spirituality. You know what their uh, perception of spirituality is? I'm sure you've probably heard it all the time. Their, their perception of spirituality is how many doors can you knock on? How many comments can you give? How many people can you bring in? How many hours can you get? That's not being spiritual. Being spiritual is doing right by people. Being spiritual is helping someone in need. Being spiritual is... If you want to participate in any kind of fundraiser or food drive or some sort of philanthropy. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> Joe Lucas don't do that at all. They don't do anything for the community. I'm doing things for the community now and it makes my heart feel so much just like so much joy. So much joy in my heart. Like it, 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 it more than any person that I've ever brought into the kingdom hall and I only brought two and those were two of my high school classmates but they never you know I just I just invited them they they didn't really accept the bible study or nothing like that and yeah I was happy to, to bring them in the kingdom hall but it's n nowhere near the joy and happiness that I get from participating in, in helping the community you know it just, it feels so much better to be able to give to people in need. I know people in the community have given to me in need when I went through a tragedy, went through uh, a tragedy that I went through. I'm not going to mention it because then I'm going to definitely give myself away. Um, because I know the whole is watching this. I just know they are. They just can't wait to, you know, see who this is and everything. But I... I, yeah, I ain't gonna do all of that. But yeah, I'm just so much happier and less anxious about um, things, you know. And it's funny how they used to preach that, oh, do not be anxious over the thing, over this and that and the other, and uh, let Jehovah provide and this and that and the, and the third. Okay, that's great and everything, but still in the back of your mind, you always think, I'm not doing enough. I'm not studying enough. I'm not going out of field service enough because they always push and push and push and push at you. It's never enough. You're never doing enough. It's never good enough. So, let me go on ahead and wrap this up because I'm almost at the house. This is Mackie, P. Mo J. W. Jones. Question everything. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. And please do not be afraid to do outside research. I love you all and peace.